in this video I want to say thump through this book. It's a very old book, it's one of the oldest books that I have and it's named the radio book for trade, amateur and listeners. So um, perhaps it's interesting to show these old schematics that's my aim at least in this video and when you want to know more about uh, very old radios and then especially I mean in America go to the uh, YouTube channel of Glasslinger or uh, the YouTube channel All American 5 Radio. Anyway, want to show some perhaps interesting things. Uh, this here is uh, one of the famous factories in those days, the NSF uh, in Hilversum in the Netherlands. Uh, and here we are have, of course, always say the pioneers of the radio in those days. This is one of them, engineer, uh, engineer Witte. Here you see is uh, an electronic, sorry, uh, a tube circuit, tube radio circuit. No, it is, um, it's indeed a tube radio circuit, but it's an only an amplifier anyway. Uh, and of course uh, we have here, say, a kind of sea to drink when we are talking about, uh, say, uh, more or less antique radios. Anyway, um, pioneers of those days, and then I mean in the Netherlands, of course I also know, say, the, the pioneers of those days in uh, the United States. Um, here is the wave table. That's, of course, very, very common. You can find it everywhere. On the World Wide Web now, etc. So here we have light, infrared, heat, uh, long wave, etc. etc. And of course, at the the higher, the highest uh, frequencies at that spectrum, we are on the Röntgen rays and gamma rays. Anyway, um, that's perhaps not so interesting. Here you see, say, a, a kind of uh, way that was always published in those days to connect your antenna to your shack. So, um, and they always used here a kind of protective circuit so that when a static charges uh, got to the antenna from our atmosphere, from our atmosphere, uh, could not uh, get into the uh, radio and especially the first stage of that radio, uh, the first tube, the high frequency tube, but anyway uh, such a high frequency tube is in a certain way not so sensitive to static charges, in a certain way. Uh, again, it's a sea to drink. Correct me if I'm wrong, by the way. Let's go to another uh, beautiful capacitor. Uh, in those days uh, they made capacitors and when you turn the plates of a capacitor the uh, capacitance changes. But when the plates have a certain form the capacitance will change in a kind of say specific way and that's the way why you see here this kind of strange um, plates, uh, pack of plates, that's what I mean, and they call it a straight line condenser. And it means that when you turn, at least in an analog radio, you turn that capacitor, all the, say, radio stations, uh, show themselves in a certain way in a straight line on the scale. Say, say with more or less um, 
constant difference anyway. And that has to do with the form, the way that the plates are made. Um, here, for instance, this is, I think, very, very interesting. And this is a circuit that you can even make now, in 2024. It's a primary one tube amplifier. It's in fact very, very simple. The uh, we, we are talking now about uh, analog radio transmission, old school, and we are talking about AM, amplitude modulated detection. And you see here that coil, um, here this coil, this one, and here another coil. And the idea is that this coil and that coil are set to a certain position where they couple and in that case you can say lift up the amplification in a very high way. And this is uh, say series tuning. That's what I have used. 500 means 500 picofarad. The coil here of course was in those days made for medium waves and long wave. Uh, more info on the World Wide Web and even on my YouTube channel. Uh, medium wave and long wave, uh, say 200 windings or so uh, in series with that 500 capacitor. And when this coil was moved to the other coil, they got coupling and it meant that the selectivity got very high. Uh, and again, when you want to study more these old 1920s, 1914s uh, radio circuits, there are many good sources on the World Wide Web. So, anyway, um, here a special coil made to choke out certain frequencies in the antenna circuit. Could be set to certain frequencies and that has everything to do with the radios in those days. Uh, many radio stations popped up with their AM signals and on a certain moment the, um, the selectivity of the simple radio, say the TRF radios, was not high enough to discriminate all these radio stations on, say, long wave, medium wave. And that's why they made a kind of filter in the antenna. And this is a very old example of such an old radio antenna filter. Here we have another circuit of, the, of a one tube amplifier, not amplifier, radio here. HS here means high voltage and you can see here that the high voltage source is connected here to uh, a headphone. Parallel to that headphone there is a thousand picofarad capacitor and here we have the same in fact, we have the same <coughs> sorry, ID uh, as I have showed earlier. Tuning cap, antenna, etc. etc. They tell here AC. I don't know what it means. It's surely not alterna uh, alternating current because it's in those days, uh, in these circuits, everything was DC current. And like I told earlier, you can surely make such a one tube amplifier now and receive via headphone or so radio stations. So um, this was say a kind of standard problem in those days. They called it neutrodyne and it had, had everything to do with the selectivity of these old radios. The uh, neutrodynization of the radio signal made the radio more selective. Where you want to know more, surely on the World Wide Web. So, 
anyway. And this is again still a circuit that you can make. Now, uh, seems very strange perhaps, but anyway. Um, well, of course, say the second development in radio technology was the so called superheterodyne. Uh, and here you see it in, in Dutch, it is waveform transformation. So you have on the antenna, say, uh, 7 megahertz, you use a separate oscillator and you use a mixer frequency trans that does the frequency transformation and it makes a intermediate frequency. So well this is a super head of say I think the 1920s or so. Also here uh, this typical a, a tuning capacitor and here the say the linearity was made by changing the thickness of the plates well that's of course also an ID and here well here you see say all the uh, capacitor types that were common in those days 19 1940. The linearity on the scale was in those days, uh, of course, a very important problem. But uh, with the help of the uh, superheterodyne principle, that problem was surely solved, though even in superheterodyne radios, uh, it could mean that not all the radio stations show up in a completely linear way on the uh, tuning scale. In those days, of course, many lead acid batteries, Farta still exists, Farta, one of the best brands now in 2024, it's originally from Germany. Uh, here, how uh, say such a high voltage battery works? Um, this is of course purely elementary. Philips rectifier charges your uh, lead acid battery while you are sleeping. That's of course advertisements, and even in those days, that was necessary. So, uh, <coughs> pure the principles, anyway. And here, finally, old photos of old equipment in those days. Um, the so-called Plaatstroom apparaat. That was a, a certain unit with which they could uh, charge high voltage batteries say in those days between 80 volts and 120 volts but also they could use it directly to supply the high voltage for the anode tube uh, of for the anode of these old tubes the famous berco loudspeaker anyway this is of course a beautiful beautiful old radio here let me show it i only have one minute here um, well, what's more to tell? Not so much more. Perhaps I can end here with advertisements in this old book. Here. Uh, one page back. Here all the, uh, say, a table of the uh, radio stations in those days. Sweden, Finland, Germany, etc, etc, etc. Well, thanks for watching. I must stop now.